What do I miss most about childhood? Honestly, my adulthood is like the best childhood anybody could ever ask for. So like, I, I remember when I was a kid, I wanted, all I wanted was like an Atari and Bo Derek. And um, it dates me a little bit, but I kind of have that now, you know, like I have all the toys, I have this beautiful wife and I, I really, and I get this job where I go and I talk about robots all day. It, my wife met me when we were, um, making System Shock 2 and I was like in the middle of crunch and I was flat broke and I was doing this weird, strange ass thing that I don't think she quite understood. And you know, it's a, it's a tribute to her patience and her vision that she, I think she always saw where I was gonna end up, where games were gonna end up more than I did. Mm -hmm. And she was always like a true believer and a huge supporter. And it was, I never had a moment of her like thinking like doubting that, I was doing the right thing. And like all these, a lot of guys talk about how their wives like get mad when they play games or stuff. M Meredith's not like that at all. She just, she gets who I am. And um, I think she really likes that, which is, you know, makes me very lucky. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I've disappointed my parents <laughs> on numerous <laughs> occasions. Um, I think I was probably a reasonable disappointment of them until, you know, the game stuff started happening. Not because, I just, I just think they were worried that I wasn't going to work. I think they thought, they weren't sure I'd be able to work hard enough to, you know, sort of achieve, achieve anything. And I think finally they saw once I did the company or everything that that was, you know, that I was way more serious. I think that was a little more serious than I, than I think, than they thought, than they thought I was. Um, and I can understand, I was kind of, I was kind of a goof off when I was a kid. Um, I didn't really, I didn't hated school and doing that stuff. So I think I was pretty disappointed in them for a, a fair amount of my life. I think they're very, they really enjoy seeing what I do now because I think that it's, there's some, you know, joy, just parental joy. And there's also probably a little bit of relief. Right. No, I, I, my, my parents were always really encouraging about doing creative stuff. I think they also realized that how risky that was. Um, and I think they um, were worried that I wouldn't, I, I couldn't buckle down if I had ended up doing like, you know, a normal, normal kind of job. Yeah. And I think they were probably right. I think if I was, you know, on Wall Street or something, or I think I'd be a real disaster because like games, you know, games industry is, it's not really a normal job. I mean, I, I, I don't think I could do the night. I think I'd be a bit, I think I'd be a huge failure if I didn't find something like games. So I just don't think I had the patience for it. I, I mean, I was, before I was, got back in games, I was a computer consultant on Wall Street and I was a complete slacker. Like I would, yeah. I would basically arrange it so I had like three hours of appointments a day and then I would just walk around the rest of the day. I was just like, I just was, you know, completely, uncommitted to the, to the task at hand. I wasn't very good at it. You know, I didn't fix anybody. I'd go fix people's computers and, I, and they'd usually stay broken after I'd gone. I just wasn't very good at it because I didn't care. The mundane parts of the company are a lot less since I sold the company a few years ago. Like yeah. there used to be like talking to accountants and lawyers and that stuff I was terrible at. I once, the Irrational, when we started Irrational, I was responsible for the papers for a while. And the first two years of operation, I left all the papers from all like the business papers and all the financial papers from our first two years of op operation in, a, in, a, in an office somewhere and lost them. <laughs> and they're gone, they're gone for the, they're lost to the ages. You know, I never, they never discovered. And so if anybody's ever writing the financial or legal history of irrational games, that'd be a tough thing to do from the first couple of years. And I'm where we were selling the company. I had to tell take two, yeah, we don't have any papers from there. And I'm sure it looked really suspicious. No, I'm just like fucking clown, you know? Um, that's, what, that's what it is. I think my, the work we do, at least the stuff that I, I'm most attached to has a certain skepticism in it about the world. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty skeptical about the world. I think that the world, it's, I like being surprised and you know, cause I'm pretty skeptical and sometimes I find things that aren't, one shouldn't be skeptical about. And I'm always attracted to people who aren't skeptical. Um, and cause I am so skeptical, but I think that's, it's hard not to see that in, in what we do.